of Taiwan. I'm Ethan Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. The world's oceans are warmer this time of year than any other year on record. That's according to the latest data from the U.S. Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They found the oceans are just over 0.2 degrees Celsius warmer than previously recorded for May. While the increase may not sound like much, scientists say the impact of small temperature changes on biodiversity and humans are substantial. Oceans absorb 90% of the heat trapped by greenhouse gases. The cooling climate pattern known as La Nina ended in March. The burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas is accelerating the climate crisis, causing more extreme weather. Farmers in one corner of central Taiwan are bringing in beehives to help boost harvests. That's as climate change sends the local bee population into decline. The goal is to increase yields while being gentler on the environment. Zhang Ventrist has more. Farmers in this part of Taiwan's central Nantou County have been busy as bees. On Wednesday, they installed 25 large beehives on their sponge gourd farms. The arrival of new bees from elsewhere is a relief because local hives have suffered from the effects of climate change. Sponge gourds are a popular ingredient in savory Taiwanese dishes. This area of Nanto County's Yuchi Township accounts for half of Taiwan's harvest. The farmers who work these 50 hectares of gourd fields have high hopes the new bees will help boost yields. All this while cutting down on the need for fertilizer. It's an eco-friendly way of farming that has this community buzzing with excitement. John Su and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Police are on the lookout for bug nappers in central Zhanghua County. There were originally believed to be about 200 rhino beetles in these woods, but only about a dozen are left after poachers snatched them up. They are being caught for the local pet trade, where each beetle can be sold for up to 10 US dollars. The beetles' numbers had only risen in the last few years because of breeding efforts. A Taiwan-Singapore research team has discovered a new species of eel. Yvonne Yang explains why the animal has caught the eye of scientists. You may have to squint to see it, but there's something different about this newly discovered species of moray eel. National Sun Yat-sen University professor Liao De Yu identified it with the help of a doctoral student in Taiwan and a researcher with the National University of Singapore. The newfound species is notable for its tiny beady eyes, or, in some specimens, having no eyes at all. This suggests they evolved in low-light environments. The species was found in caves in Australia and the Philippines. It's the first documented moray eel to be discovered in caves with landlocked bodies of water. Scientists trap the eels in these freshwater caves, but moray eels are typically found in salt water. There's still much to learn about this newly discovered fish, but the facts shouldn't be too hard to find as long as the researchers keep their eyes peeled. Andy Xie and Yvonne Yang for Taiwan Plus. An immersive photo exhibition is now on display at Taipei 101. It showcases the natural beauty of Taiwan by combining 360-degree photography with time-lapse technology. Eric Gao takes a look. From stunning mountain ranges with flowing rivers to glowing cityscapes, these are scenes from the amazing Formosa exhibition, currently on show at Taipei 101. It highlights the natural beauty of Taiwan with the use of time-lapse photography. Viewers can watch as minutes and hours are condensed into just a few seconds. Malaysian photographer Feng Yehui spent seven years in Taiwan documenting its natural surroundings. He captured shots of famous attractions like the Blue Tears in a variety of seasons, virtually transporting attendees to these environments. 
The 360-degree images are combined with natural sound effects and music to make the exhibition an immersive and powerful experience. We Officials from Taiwan's culture ministry say these techniques are a perfect way to showcase the country's natural magnificence. The exhibition is running through early July, giving people a month to experience the visual wonders of Taiwan. Klein Wong, Sam Hui, and Eric Gao for Taiwan Plus. Get your cameras ready as Taichung's Rainbow Village, one of Taiwan's most popular spots on Instagram, has reopened. That's after some of the open-air artwork was destroyed last summer. As John Ventress reports, replacing the ruined murals has been a community effort. This team of young artists is helping save a local landmark. Rainbow Village in the central city of Taichung is an old military housing estate turned public work of art. The cheerful murals covering the buildings are the work of 99-year-old Huang Yongfu, who's lived here much of his life. These paintings saved his home from demolition and launched it to internet fame. Pre-COVID, a million visitors came each year. But it hasn't all been rainbows. Last summer, the company hired to manage the site destroyed some of the artwork in protest amid disputes with the city. It says it only destroyed its own additions to the artwork, leaving Huang's originals alone. Either way, locals have picked up their own paintbrushes to create a temporary fix. They're painting wooden boards that will be placed over the ruined sections. The village has reopened on a trial basis through the end of the month. Meanwhile, the legal aftermath of the defacement continues. Police are also taking steps to make sure there's no further damage. What's still unclear is how the site will be run in the future. The plan is to keep it free, non-profit, and open to the public. But for now, there's no plan to hire another company to manage it. Alex Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan Sports Administration has announced the team it's sending to the World Games for students at the end of July. Les Liao has more. Taiwan is sending 212 athletes to compete at the 2023 World University Games or University Ad in Chengdu, China at the end of July. Among them are judo athlete Yang Yongwei, taekwondo star Luo Jialing, and gymnast Li Zhikai. All three are full Olympic medalists, and so are carrying the main hopes of the nation. Another notable competitor is national swim champion Eddie Wong, who recently punched his ticket to the 2024 Paris Olympics after setting a national record for the 200-meter butterfly. However, there are a few past contenders who didn't make this year's list. Some were left out because of injury, others for personal reasons. Taiwan's sports authorities say they're cautious yet optimistic about this year's showing. It might be a sporting event for university students, but don't mistake youth for a lack of experience. Taiwan is sending some of its best to vie for the top spots in Chengdu, Yisun Pan, and Leslie Liao for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we leave you with images of a surfer who challenged himself to surf barrel waves for 100 days in Rio de Janeiro. I'm Ethan Liu, take care, and I'll see you next time.